can speak on a matter that affects our country in the same, with the same passion and the same magnitude. Yesterday, Mr. Speaker, I sat on, in this house, and as you know, we also have our lobby on the other side where if you're tired, you can keep on watching these debates. So is today, Mr. Speaker. And always in the quest of justice, so as to be impartial, so that you can be fair, and so as you can ensure that as an arbiter of law, you are able to make proper judgment, Mr. Speaker, it is always good to listen. Listen more than you say. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, in these last two days, I've tried as much as possible not to come to this house with point of orders, not to come to this house to ask questions, but go with the mantra that God gave us two ears and one mouth so that we can hear more, and also two eyes so that we can read more, and one mouth so that we can speak less when we have absorbed more. And I've listened in this house, Mr. Speaker. As a young man, I don't think that today's judgment is on the deputy governor of Kisi. As a young man in this country, I think that today's judgment is on us senators. And in my seconding this motion, Mr. Speaker, I want to just to ask one question. You don't need to answer me, because we are in the quest for justice, and quest for justice cannot be there without truth. And sometimes truth is about self-examination, Mr. Speaker. I want to ask my brother Lelegwe. I want to ask my brother Matthew. I want to ask my sister Tabitha. I want to ask my sister Gloria. I want to ask my brother Kinjwa my brother, Honorable Morgan here, my brother, Senator Ledama, all of these brothers of mine and sisters who are here, tell me if you reflect that in the history of your life, in this country, if you have not met a relative, young from school, well qualified, and desperate for a job, who has sought for a job, and has not been asked for bribe. It's a self-reflection we must do. We are faced with a case here that we must determine the future of this country. I can bet that if you self-examine, if you don't have a relative, you have got a neighbor. If you don't have a neighbor, you have got a village mate. If you don't have a village mate, you have got a friend who has sought for a job, desperate for it, qualified for it, and indeed willing to work at that job that is asked for, bribes, or some sort of tokens by people who own power, and in some cases, they lose big. I was a little bit hurt as a young person, because that experience, I do know that even among young people who are today rioting in the streets in the name of medical interns, I know a number of them I have reached out to us senators and told us, I'm trying to look for this job, but I'm being asked for 300,000. I'm being asked for 100,000. I can't get this job. And then, Mr. Speaker, when the defense appeared in this house, they call a young man who has lost money in that quest of desperation and destitutedness. They say, that's a gambler. And as a gambler, we as a house, must never listen to that gambler. As if one, gambling is a sin is in, the, in this country and is, uh, and is not in law in this country. And number two, because you are gambling, even if you are gambling for Arsenal, some, sometimes they say, Mr. Speaker, I want, I want to quote, now I can lay Man U Kichwa. For those, all those people who put money for Man U, if they say anything before the law, then they are not serious. Mr. Speaker, as I finish, if you look at the DG's response, volume one, page 65 to 66, there's a number that drew my attention in the cooperative bank account of the key witness from the DG side, the father of Dennis. And that number is 
I want, I want to mention it. I'll just say 0702, uh, 2, 000, then the rest you can check if you have got those files. I did a simple search. If you look at that number, it belongs to the accused. And a number of times, the same person who is saying that they had given the wife money to go and give the son to give to the deputy governor, in a number of times I send money directly from that cooperative bank account to the same person, not once, not twice, but many times. It behooves you to ask, what necessitated that this time round, the money had to come from the same account, go to the wife, and then go to the son, so that it can reach the same number that is in, the sound, in, in that file. As I finish, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to judge the governor on the basis of lies. But today's judgment is for the young people in this country who try to tarmac so much in this country to look for jobs. And because people in power want money from them, we must show as a house that we can stand united on a bipartisan manner and stop this menace of corruption that denies young people opportunities. And I wish to urge this house that the act of sending the deputy governor of Kisi home is not malice. It's about rethinking our future generation and how people in positions can be able to ensure that there is equal opportunities and equal chances for all. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I support the motion and I thank you, and I hope that the dear senators here will speak not to the deputy governor, not to the county assembly of Kisi, but to themselves as they reimagine and they rethink the idea of equal opportunities to all. I thank all, Mr. Speaker.